Welcome to Wayward Writers. We're excited today because we have Hala and Chris Massey with us, who are marriage and family therapists and psychologists. And we would like to discuss mental health and writing and how they intersect and how they play on each other. So anyway, I am going to introduce you to Holly. Dr. Holly Massey is a licensed clinical psychologist and marriage and family therapist and shares a private practice in the suburbs of Los Angeles with her husband and BFF, Chris Massey, LMFT. In an effort to promote herself on social media without having her clients find her, Dr. Massey shadows as Dr. Wood E. Woodchuck, LMFT, LMNOP a dapper school psychologist and marmot at Rodentia Elementary School in Rodentia, USA. In addition to marrying Chris and having two beautiful children, Dr. Massey's lifelong dream has been, one, to have an unlimited supply of turkey sandwiches, and two, become a published children's book author. While she's still working on the first dream, any and all Delhi partnership inquiries, her debut middle grade graphic novel, Say Something, Pupa Babe, illustrated by Ghazi Kadri, comes out by Yellow Jacket in fall of 2024. So we're very excited to have Holly here with us today. Yes, we are. And we're excited to have Christopher too, Chris Denoyer Massey had a plethora of amazing jobs, including a film crew member that made a film about a half dinosaur, half crocodile that terrorizes the residents of a small lakeside town. He is also a film school geek who shot an actual film and edited with a razor blade and splice tape. He was a salesman of cheap Christmas products at a makeshift booth in Galloway. And um, he's also been a poet published in a prestigious literary journal while posing as a disgruntled IT worker from Kaiser Permanente. During the, for the last decade, though, he's been a suburban dad, husband, and psychotherapist in private practice with an actual license issued by the California Board of Behavioral Science and an MA in clinical psychology and two years of training and board membership with the Gestalt Therapy Institute of Los Angeles. Chris lives and works in Los Angeles with his wife, the writer and psychologist, Dr. Hala Massey. And we're really excited to have you guys here today to talk about writing and mental health because it's something I think we all, of course, deal with it, but writers especially sometimes deal with some mental health issues. It's a stressful occupation and we have questions for you. So hopefully you can help us out. Thanks for having us. So I want to dive in with a question, which I've been thinking a lot about this topic as it came up in our podcast. And I feel like right now, especially with publishing, having some kind of big issues, that this mental health issue is becoming more and more of something that I think we need to talk about with writers. Uh, How does writing improve our mental health from a practical standpoint? Yeah, there are a lot of studies that show how with writing, it allows you to be more introspective and really look with rather than having these ruminating thoughts or overthinking something, it allows you to put it down on paper or however you want to put it down. But it also helps in terms of decreasing anxiety and stress and depression. Writing really helps. Studies show how it helps promote sleep, helps with promoting healthy relationships, communicating better, regulating emotions. It helps in a wider array of ways. So I think it's the studies have shown how helpful it has been with regards to mental health. And if I could just add to that too, I think just the idea of telling your story which writing often is, it's not always our story, some aspect of giving voice to, to our truth or, or speaking out something that in itself, there's even whole branches of therapy called narrative therapy and where it's really make telling your, your own story. So that's really essential. I also think some of the things we do as writers, setting short-term and long-term goals, handling rejection, 
these are really essential components to life. And when we talk about writing, especially from a, a career perspective, it plunges us into some pretty important, I guess, not just topics, but the life roles and teaches us often in not always kind ways to, to deal with those things. And, and in order to complete a project or even just get something on paper, there's a lot that goes into that in terms of goal setting and all those other things. So the process of writing teaches us a lot and it helps us deal with those things as they come up in other areas of our life too. Yeah. With regards to people that I work with too, it, it helps so much, even if they're not the trajectory of getting published or anything like that, particularly since the pandemic, writing has been an essential part of their lives as far as decreasing some of this anxiety. And a lot of my clients, they journal every day, whether it's at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, they set their intention and it really helps with that anxiety and depression. Yeah, definitely. The idea of just having a creative outlet too, again, all I said, whether it's professionally or not, or with the goal of getting published or not, I think really essential component of approaching mental health from a more holistic perspective. We need to take care of uh, our bodies. We need to take care of our brains. We need to do all of these things. And, and when not just the physical or the mental, but the creative, like a, a way to nourish our whole being. So we totally promote and endorse, whether it's journaling or short story writing or writing long form fiction, whatever works for you. So do you recommend for writers for their mental health to maybe write something that's different? Like I said, keep a journal or do something different than what they're working on for a work project? I can only speak to it personally. I don't keep a journal, but it is essential mm -hmm. for me to write every day as far as okay. my own mental health, as far as being a more patient person. And I think Chris is the same way. It's essential for both of us to write every day. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody's so different. What what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the other, but definitely both of us find writing and, and the act of just telling a story and producing something and, and getting it out. And again, hopefully if we're really connecting to our stories and our characters in a way, we're also speaking our truth and getting getting our thoughts and feelings out. So for some people that does look like creating the uh, stories and fiction for other people, it does look mm -hmm. like journaling. Just getting it out. I think that's the whole point of it. So you don't have to, particularly as, as Hollywood was saying with anxiety or things kind of cycle, circle around in our heads or a certain emotional states that just, just getting it out is, is so essential. So writers might find journaling uh, alongside uh, writing, uh, like more crafted projects helpful or it's really, truly what works for you. So what happens when the writing is the problem? The writing is what's making you anxious. <laughs> <laughs> that is very problematic. <laughs> that, 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 that can be very true. I think yeah. what we define uh, a problem as when something interferes with the rest of your daily functioning. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with writing being a very all-encompassing thing, which it often is. Something you're thinking about as you're on the walk or in the shower or eating lunch or whatever. It's when it becomes an obsession to the point where it's interfering with your daily functioning, even as severe as you're not sleeping, you're not eating, you're not okay. you know, getting your other work done, or it's impairing your relationships. That's when we want to step back and say, okay, is this moving beyond a healthy outlet or even a healthy career and into a realm of an obsession? And, and that's when we can step back and say, what are we neglecting in the rest of our lives? What else are we not doing? Are we not Mm -hmm. getting out, getting some fresh air? Are we not, you know, spending some time with other people and, and just isolating? Are we not eating right? Are we not, you know, getting sleep? And that's when we we try to back up and, and, and look for balance. And interestingly, okay. that same thing when we're talking about mental health diagnoses, we, we really look for is how are these uh, symptoms impairing daily functioning? Because technically, according to the DSM and all these things that, that create diagnoses, if something is not... Uh, pairing with our daily functioning, getting in the way of, of these things. It's not even really a mental health diagnosis, even if it's something as uh, extreme as feeling intense emotional states or, or even, believe it or not, having auditory or visual hallucinations, things like that. They really don't define it as a diagnosis unless it's affecting our functioning and getting in, in the way of the rest of life. So the short answer to that long answer is just finding balance, really recognizing that there's a wide range of things that we do and we can get really caught up and focused on 
you know, getting that project done or whatever it is, but we need to step back and say, hey, how am I not taking care of the rest of my being? It is comforting to know that when my characters are talking to me that I'm not going to have to, totally. I can answer back. I can't. <laughs> not diagnosable. It's oh, okay. That's, well. that's going to relieve a lot of writers out there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, maybe maybe not our spouses or partners, but <laughs> the writer themselves. <laughs> that's really that. That's good advice. I think balance, balance in everything. Absolutely. Hard to maintain sometimes, I agree. though. Very hard. Easier yeah. said than done. So, what ways do the stages of our writing career or the writing process affect our mental health? We're all in different stages of our careers. We're on different paths. We're hoping that the people listening to this podcast aren't necessarily pigeonholing themselves into a specific path because we believe there are a lot of different paths that are really good. Speaking to all different kinds of writers who might be in different parts of their career, how does that affect their mental health or how does that affect mental health in general, do you think? Personally, for me, I started out when I had finished my schooling and in school for psychology, they were telling me what to write. So I had to write their prompts. And when I, when I graduated, I really wanted to write a book, which is great and all, but it's not that easy. And written a book, which I thought it was great. But when I wrote it, I showed it to Chris. He was very supportive. I and he said it just needs a little bit of work. When I showed it to my sister, she's an she writes literary fiction. She let me know it's not this needs a lot of work as far as plot. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> no, all of it well, as far as your yeah. plot, her plot are just everywhere, and that affected my mental health. It really right. made me very depressed. I didn't write for a whole month, but I was really upset with her. <laughs> but she she doesn't know what she's talking about. She did though. It was necessary for me to hear that. And the good thing is that I didn't stop writing and I realized I needed to continue to write, which was essential for my mental health because mm. I needed that writing. And so I did that. I did that for 10 years. I wrote and I got rejected a lot in that process. And that was very difficult for my mental health. It's not easy trying yeah. to get traditionally published. I understand why people go to self-publishing. It takes a lot to keep going when people say your work is not good enough or um, even when they say it I is good it enough and then they reject you anyways but it's not yeah for me or or <laughs> yeah yeah there's a plenty of, I've we whatever. just published a story like this <laughs> <laughs> exactly thankfully i was able to meet heather and that that affected my mental health i was so happy <laughs> when i finally <laughs> landed the page and and she saw and then work. I gave you edits, and that probably affected your mental health. <laughs> right. We need to work on this. Probably in a very kind way. She's so kind, and she was yeah. so wonderful. And kind helps. So helpful. Heather has been so wonderful as far as her edits, and she never pushes me to do anything. She always gives suggestions, which I always go for because they're wonderful, and <laughs> I always agree. But yes, that also affects your mental health because you realize okay, I need to work on this. But I do think, again, I even if Heather had never signed me as a client, I wouldn't stop writing it. Mm. That's so important to my mental health. Mm. I would still want to be traditionally published and I'd still be looking for an agent. But again, the process of writing every day is essential. Regarding I think that's really important to know your why. Like, why are you doing this? Is it for you? And then what are your priorities? Is the primary reason that you're doing this because you love writing and you need it in your life? Or is it because... So I think keeping those priorities in mind too. Chris, did you want to follow up with that? I think that makes a lot of sense. I just wanted to jump in on some of the things that I think you're getting to too. And what, what Holly was saying is, you know, the persistence that it takes in order to keep writing in the face of rejection is obviously really key and something that Holly's really amazing at the work ethic of just writing, writing and constantly improving. In terms of mental health, I think what you're just saying, Heather, is really important. Trying to figure out why you're writing and what purpose it's serving. And your question regarding how does mental health affect writers at different stages of their career. As a therapist, I work with writers oh. at times. And a lot of times the newer writers might struggle with work-life balance, not letting that obsession or that need to get 
over that initial hurdle of getting signed as an agent or getting published or whatever your goal is, but they have that drive. They have that passion of this is what I'm writing. This is my purpose. And, but maybe they don't have the business side yet or the work-life balance yet. And then sometimes I'll work with people later in their careers who maybe achieved and been quite successful financially or otherwise. And they're maybe struggling with the other side. Like they've got the work-life balance. They've learned how to earn money, but now they're they're feeling like they're not really coming from a, a place of passion or joy or exuberance or a right. reason why they're. So they might mm -hmm. have to try to reconnect to that or often find new ways like mentorship or teaching or that kind of thing to nourish that that part of themselves or to take care of that side of their mental health and hopefully keep writing and, and keep on. I think it's really writing. interesting that a lot of our struggles and our issues are what actually create great art. It sounds cruel in a way, maybe, but I feel like Hala was saying before, when you're using it as a tool for mental health, you're really just pouring your emotions into a page. And I feel like that is what really resonates and connects with other people who are struggling with the same thing. It's very relatable. Maybe when you get rich, that doesn't happen so much. <laughs> Hopefully we'll oh, to like have those problems. <laughs> I know. I need to have those problems, don't I? I know. It'd be nice. so it's you a were, great, I'm getting... sure that's great problems to have. Yeah. yeah. Just made so much money off my writing. I don't even know what to do. With it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. You were making some really good suggestions. And one of the things I was hearing was support. You have an agent that has a good partnership and it's a support system for you. Critique partners. Are there some other practical systems or things that we can do at a more regular daily or weekly or monthly basis or things that we can put into place to help us when it does get tough. And it always does get tough. I think for us, it, it, we just know that we each need our own writing time. And so we mm -hmm. give it to one another. We know that it's so essential. So we make sure we make room for that every single day. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, there's the two sides of it. There's the one, as you're saying, the support network, which is so essential. And mm -hmm. I think not just writing, but life. And whether we're talking particularly with depression, which a lot of people define as a feeling of disconnection, of not being connected to the world, other people, parts of yourself. So we talk about connection as the real kind of antidote, surrounding yourself with support, with loved ones. And writing, I think, is the same thing mm -hmm. as Holly brought up having different types of support. I think she had the, but when she was talking about her stories early on, she had the husband of everything's great, love it, keep <laughs> yeah. writing. She had the sister who's more on the literary side and, and a little tougher saying, this is not good, this is not good, and bringing out the red line. We need all of that. We need people who can be real with us right. and authentic with us about what's right, what's not right. We also need people who mm -hmm. are just in our corners and cheering for us and supporting us no matter what. Sometimes we're lucky enough, we get, I think, Heather, you're a great example of this for Holly, uh, probably a little bit of each, someone who's a real supporter, but who can also be real and say, this needs work or this needs change or. Or like the end of, this is not going to sell. Heather knows what's going to sell. And so if I write, yeah. it's a great piece of work, but I can't place it anywhere. Sure. And, sure. and so mm -hmm. she lets me know that. And I appreciate that honestly. And uh, getting back to, to what Holly was saying before, yeah. the support can also mean someone who really understands what you need and giving them the space to do that. Um, and I think that's something we, in a lot of relationships, are, try to learn. It's not always just how to be there for someone. It's also how to give the appropriate space and say, okay, I, this person really needs, didn't get to write today or, and they really need it. So even if I'm burnt out and the kids are climbing my head, but the house is burning down, they still need to get that time. And so we can make those sacrifices for each other. So do you have suggestions for people who don't have that support? Because I have a super supportive husband who has always done that for me too. But also I knew that for a long time, my writing was not bringing in an income or doing anything really beneficial except for helping me in my own mental health. But I know that there are people and there are also times when even as amazing as he is, he would say things to me that he said because he didn't understand what writing was about for me. Yeah. And he never, ever intended to be negative or anything like that. And he didn't even realize he was saying things like that to me. But it would still just 
crush me, right? Because I'm, I'm my own worst critic. So when you don't have, or maybe when you have a spouse or siblings or whoever in your life, relationships, a best friend who are not supportive or who are, why don't you just quit already? Like you've been trying to get published for 10 years. Do you have any suggestions for how we can keep going and have the confidence or have the passion, keep that in our lives so that we can do what we need to do for ourselves? I think it's important also to surround yourself with other writers because the non-writer might not understand how important writing is to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when like writing groups or finding that also helps with accountability, but other people who get how important it is. So I have family members and friends who they appreciate, you know, my writing, Chris's writing, but they don't understand, they don't write. So they don't get how important it is for our mental health and just our happiness. I think that's so essential. Mm -hmm. I think community and again, connection is everything. And sometimes just people who do creative work, people can understand too. Like it doesn't even necessarily have to be a writer. Someone who has to paint or has to take pictures. They get it. They get how important that is to you. And finding that community are very lucky that we found each other who can connect on that writing level, That's connect right. on therapists, but being able to find those people wherever you can find them, because obviously they're all out there looking for other people to connect with and find that community of support. So whether it's writers groups, whether it's other people in your life who do creative work, therapists, other ways to find support, community, connection is really essential. Most most of us are not as lucky as we are to have it in a spouse or in, in someone who's sitting there right next to you every day. So we do have to make up a little more effort to find those writers groups or find those workshops or find that therapy or find that artist friend or wherever you can get it. Just people who get it and get you and can be all of those things, those sources of support or, or honest feedback and criticism, whatever that is. And that's exactly what we're really hoping to do with our podcast and with our Wayward Writers community is to try and provide that support, a place for people that they can come and meet each other, ask questions and feel supported because it's fun. I love to write, but any of us who've been doing it for a while know it can affect your self-confidence, your attitude. Rejection is hard and having constant critiques is difficult. So having somebody who does understand that, a community, I think is so important. So I, I hope people will reach out to us and let us know how we can support you too in, in building that community. And I think it's important too, when you find people, I have been in a few writers groups over the years and I have had people who even in those groups were not supportive. And yeah. I think it's really important to recognize, I didn't really think about it before, but it is important to recognize when people are not being positive in your life. And like you said, surround yourself with the ones who are. So essential, yeah. whether it's writers or anything yeah. else, recognize that and gravitating towards those and finding those who do and, and maybe taking some space and some time to to pull away from the people who don't provide that as much or I think it's such a hard thing to do. Yeah. Very. It's, it's also this idea of also being confident in your writing too, right? Because I think you have to have some element of confidence in order to join some of these groups. For those 10 years, like I felt like I wrote in a vacuum because I wasn't quite sure, can I share this? And I shared it with agents. I queried and all of that, but I, hmm. I didn't feel comfortable sharing it after I had that initial criticism from my sister, it was very hard. It was very devastating. And I think it was hard after that to be able to share it with mm -hmm. others. Good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Being able to find people that you do trust with something that's really precious to you because you're writing, it, it's such an extension of yourself, even if it's fiction and not really about you, or if I write nonfiction and a biography about someone else, it's still my work poured out there. So yeah, being careful about who you trust mm -hmm. with your work and something that's precious is important. Yeah. It's a yeah. very vulnerable process. I think you're absolutely right to, to that's share what what's I was right. just thinking. I was yeah, just thinking, so is. how do you become vulnerable enough mm -hmm. 
that you can submit and you can mm. keep submitting and you can keep submitting even after hundreds and hundreds of rejections. How do you stay vulnerable enough to do that, but yet confident enough to keep writing? I'm going to pass this one to her because I'm somewhere <laughs> in that range myself. So I'm continuing to write and continuing to put it out there, but without receiving a tremendous amount of those, those little nuggets here and there. Of, oh yeah, this is great. I'd love to read more, but not quite for this marketplace or not quite for that. Or, and it, it right. is hard to keep going. And I think that's one of Holly's strengths that she can share with us and writers too, is that persistence and that ability to keep going and keep going and maintain that work ethic. Like you said, even if you feel like you're doing it in a vacuum. Um, yeah, and, for and 10 like, years. So what kept yeah. you going? I'd always wanted to be traditionally published. It was like a lifelong dream of mine. So I always had that end goal in mind. What was really helpful along the way in those 10 years was that I yeah. saw my writing was improving. Mm -hmm. I saw if I read my initial novel, and I've read a lot of books since then. If I read yeah. that first one, it wasn't great. It wasn't good enough. <laughs> but through the process, I saw myself improving and that felt good. That helps. That really helps yeah, to yeah. see, okay, I know how to. I'm starting to get how to do this. Yeah. And I think that makes you want to write more because then you read back this work that you feel good about and you want to keep writing. So celebrating the progress along the way Absolutely. is one of the ways. It's yeah. so amazing how much this parallels what we talk about with our patients, with our clients too. That's mm -hmm. so true. Like we're always trying to remind people of how far we've come, or even if it's incrementally. She's saying from one book to the next, from one draft to the next, or if we're working on mental health from one day to one week to one month, whatever the struggle is, we're working on being able to, to step back and, and recognize that if we're persistent and we work hard and we really care and are really engaged, we are going to get better. Things are going to improve by making certain choices and, and her writing keeps getting better and she keeps working at it and, and is able to see again from draft to draft and project to project, how much better it's getting and that. That feels good. That can keep you going when you really focus on the work and, and not how it's being received. I think that's another lesson I've learned from working with people who are later stage career writers. Like they really do not even think about how, unless it's to be sold or not, am I writing this? How is someone, once they're done with it, they're done with it. And they put it out there in the world. They're not sitting and waiting for the email reply or the, when is that? publisher, producer, whatever, going to get back to me. They say, I did my work. I really put everything into it. I did amazing work. So I'm letting go. This is my mm -hmm. process that's more internal rather than based on a series of external validation. Yeah. What really helps too is also I, every once in a while, I like to go back and look at that first book that I wrote. <laughs> and then you're like, wow, I'm a great writer. I'm a genius now. <laughs> oh, when I have more writers block and go back and look at what I wrote 10 years ago, I'm like, my goodness, I've come a long ways. Like, yeah. Finally, understand plot a little bit. Or if it's so my true. characters aren't just floating around there. So it's nice to go back and see that progress as well. I think it's helpful. It's so for true. My <laughs> we get so stuck on now and how awful this isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. But sometimes if we step back and say, but it's getting better, but I'm not here yet, but I'm also not here anymore. So yeah. I'm, I'm working on yeah. it. It's getting better. It's getting better. I can try to si silence that, that inner critic, as you're saying that we all can struggle with at times. It sounds also like you've made up your mind, both of you, that your writing is it's essential to your life and you're in it for the long haul. So you're looking at the long game rather oh, yeah. than I couldn't imagine just not a writing. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. In some way, shape or form, I think it is essential to my like mental health as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm always good, right. I think it I have yeah. to. Yeah. 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 That's how I am too. Oh. Helps you not yeah. quit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like, where would all of these stories go if I didn't write them down? Yeah, mm -hmm. these thoughts, these feelings, these characters, mm -hmm. these so voices in our heads. Yeah, yeah. It's, very, put them somewhere. Very, yeah. it's very therapeutic. It really helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels so good just to finish something too. Just oh, yeah. whether it's longer form fiction or a short story or a poem, there's mm -hmm. that amazing sense of completion when it's mm -hmm. done, at least after it's done. And then we start attacking it again. But Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then there's revisions. That's one good thing to remember, too, is that 
I've been on I've been on submission with my agent for a YA project that took me like years and years to finally get to where I felt really good about it. And it's been just getting rejections all the time because it's very strange and different. But I found I found this this subject that I really was passionate about for a picture book. And I wrote this picture book and it was so satisfying to be able to complete. Now, picture books are not easy. I am in no way saying that. But you can complete and polish a picture book in much less time than it takes to do a 90,000 word novel. And it was so satisfying for me to complete that picture book. And now it's going on submission. And it's It was like, wow, that was awesome. And so I feel like that's something to keep in mind, too, is that we need that feeling of accomplishment, right? Of feeling like we have done something. We finished it. We've completed it. And it's wonderful. And maybe it's Hmm. not wonderful, but it's still done. And I think that's something to keep in mind. Maybe if you are a novel writer and struggling, maybe try something short. Maybe try a short story. and put it out to magazines or something like that. That's how Stephen King got started. I I do think that's trying something different, getting in a different headspace. I think that can help your creativity. And I would assume it's helping your mental health then too, if you're shifting gears. What do you think, Chris? And I think so. I think so. I don't know as much statistically, but as far as personally, absolutely. I think Mm -hmm. when I was young and and like a teenager, I needed to write for my mental health in a very essential way. And I would write poems. You can write a poem rather quickly. A lot of them were not Mm -hmm. very outstanding poems, but then I'm moving, I tried to write like screenplays then, and that was pretty daunting. And then I moved back to writing short stories and then novels and back Mm -hmm. to screenplays. And, And I think a lot of those choices were not just based on, is this the best medium for the story I want to tell, but some of those key components like I just I need to complete something or I need to try to move on to a different it reminds me I think I've heard of one of my favorite filmmakers the Coen brothers they were writing a masterpiece called uh, Miller's Crossing that was really complicated and and had all these twists and turns and they had to step back from it and then they wrote Barton Fink which is just this wonderful kind of odd little tale and then they got back to finishing Miller's Crossing so even in the interim and the in between you can create some amazing work just to go off and try to finish something because your, your head is spinning from, you know, not being able to complete the other thing, or, or maybe it was taking us in one direction or another, or just following that path of writing in different mediums or writing a different story and then coming back to your other story. Maybe you weren't ready to finish it, or maybe the characters hadn't, you hadn't gone through that journey to allow your characters to go through that journey, or there can be all kinds of reasons to, to step away, go somewhere else, maybe come on back. That's really helped me too. I think when I've been stuck, let's say in a middle grade book, I'm not quite sure where it's going to go. I might then go to doing a picture book, which again, that, that is very difficult too. So it's so difficult. It's impossible to me. But it helps help, I think, then going back, it, it helps with that writer's block too, completing that and then moving back to that yeah. novel. It's been helpful for me. Yeah. Speaking of I picture think- books, that seems so, so challenging. It seems like the shorter the work, the harder it is to complete. I realized that when I was studying short stories too, it, it seemed harder to write a good short story than to write a novel. And then to write a picture book to have that story precise and tight in such few words, it's beyond me. Sorry to get But like you're saying, that. it's fun to try the different challenges, I think, mm-hmm. too. And I think yeah. that shifting, that moving and trying the different paths. And that's here at Wayward Writers, we talk about all the different paths. And I think you're talking about mm-hmm. maybe sampling some different paths to help us with our mental health can be a good thing too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have any other things you would like to add? Questions we should have asked? I think for other writers who are, you know, watching this, I think it's just so important, this idea of not giving up. There is going to be a lot of rejection. And from what Heather is telling me, it's gotten even more with what publishing houses are picking up and so I imagine that's also with agents. So it's this idea, just keep doing it. If you love it, keep working on it. And mm-hmm. you will find someone, hopefully, that will love your work as much as you do. But it, just the process of writing, I think, is just so essential to me. So just, just keep doing it. 
I think it's great advice that enjoy the process of it. Maybe don't think so much about forward, like that it has to get published, that you have, but that enjoy the actual process and revel in that part of it. And that mm. may help us to reduce anxiety and stress over it. Go back to the whole reason why you started writing in the first place and the fun that you have with it. Yeah. Joy yeah. in the journey. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah, I think that's really important, too, because even after you get published, you get rejections in the form of reviews. It, it literally never oh, ends. Oh. There are always people <laughs> who are going to not like your work. But I think the key thing to remember, too, and I tell this to my clients who are getting reviews, is that you are writing something. There's a group of people out there who are going to connect with it. You just have mm. to find them. And it's mm. the same with that one editor or that one agent. You just have to find them. And mm. I think, too, knowing yourself and knowing what is it that you truly want. If, like Holly, you want this, you definitely want this traditional. And if you don't ever get published because you didn't get published traditional, that's the way it's going to be. And I think if you know that about yourself, that's fine and you can keep going. But I think if you have different goals or you don't care about getting traditionally published, then find the path that works the best for you and then follow it. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, then just keep trying something else. Try those and different paths. And I think you're right too, Heather. You're Not everyone's going to like your writing. Even, no. Let's say after you get published, there's going to people be people who don't like it. And right. that's okay too. It might not be for everyone. So they don't read it mm. or they write a yeah. bad review. <laughs> Thank right. You. Yeah. There's, you have to have thick skin. You're working in this right. industry. Yeah. Right. Fifty Shades of Grey sold millions and millions of copies, and I will never read that book. <laughs> That's just the reality of everyone's yeah. book, right? It doesn't matter how popular it is. You're going to have people who don't like it. This has been really helpful, and I really appreciate this because I think yeah. getting to talk to you two about writing and mental health, because I think we writers just, we struggle with all of those things we've talked about, our self-esteem, are we going, does somebody like us? And hearing from you, reminding us to stay in the moment, to surround ourselves mm -hmm. with positive partners. Those are all really helpful mm -hmm. things. I really appreciate this. We appreciate yeah. it too. And I, I think the one, one last thing I wanted to add too, in terms of needing to write or trusting the process is I, I think writing is a therapy in itself and recognizing that when we're really putting our heart into it, the characters that we're creating, there, there's a form of dream analysis, Jungian dream, dream analysis, where they say everybody in your dream is really just a part of you. And you look at it from that perspective. And we talk about different forms of writing, even if it's highly fictional. And, and I write some stuff that's out there. So believe me, it's not all exactly me. But if you recognize that these are all parts of ourselves, these characters interacting, the, the things that they're doing, the ways we're really doing a, a form of therapy when we're writing, mm -hmm. we're, we're having these conversations with different parts of ourselves, which are techniques of gestalt therapy and things like that. And so we really are, if we're really diving into these characters and getting inside their minds and hearts and having them talk to each other, and, and we're really just exploring different parts of ourselves and working them out and giving voice to things. And so... I, like I think that's why for me too, the process of writing is so essential. It's, yeah. it's really like a therapy. It's really different parts of myself, different characters. And again, if you're a writer like myself who really can go pretty dark and go into horror and go into crime fiction and stuff, it's really like diving into these parts of ourselves that we don't even necessarily want to. And, and therapy can be the same thing. Looking at the moments in our life or, or people or, or, or things that, that can be very difficult to confront. And writing is just it's, it's exploring these wonderful, fantastic, joyful, and, and silly, and, and fun, and parts of ourselves that maybe we don't always allow to exist and, and come out. And so, really remembering that you know this process of, of writing that we're doing is, is really is there is, is its own form of, of working. Thank cool. you. Thanks. That was, was really good. interesting. And I, uh, as you were saying it, I'm like, yes, this is totally true about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm going to be scared so to send my next stuff to Heather. She's going to know too much about me. <laughs> I'm going to start analyzing all my clients. <laughs>
<laughs> no, it could be like our our business and all of those things too. Even if certain characters come out, it doesn't mean it's literally ourselves, but it could be something that represents yeah. a, a nightmare or or, or a dream oh, yeah. or, or all of all the yeah. things that yeah. connect to it. That's, that's I know important. when I start writing and I feel like I'm exploring a topic, usually that's what makes me write is that I have experiences that I don't know exactly how I feel about it. And I think what I do is I take different characters and I make them think different things about the subject so that I explore it. And I that's why I write. So, yeah, it's very revealing to yourself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I stick to middle grade and like awkward adolescence because that was something I built with. And I think that because I went through that, it. I understand it, so maybe I can write it better. And, and it helps me go through that and work through all of that Exactly. As well. It's something we're continually like revisiting and, and exploring and, and trying to confront and learn new things about our characters, telling us things that we didn't even realize mm -hmm. were, were there about ourselves and about our experiences and, and the meaning we've made from it. Yeah. And everyone has such a different voice and a different experience. So it's nice to put that out there. My experience yeah. is different from Chris's. Oh, but... That's great. Love it. This has been really fun. It has. Yeah, thank Thanks you so much. much for having us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thanks for giving us your time and wisdom. Our pleasure. And thank you. if you want to learn more about Holly and Chris, they will be in our upcoming newsletter. Thank yes. you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks a lot.